guys, welcome back to my channel, ASMR Audio Bible. Today we are going to be reading Exodus 38 through 40 and Hebrews 1. Hope everybody's day was good and exciting. Yeah. 
priestly garments. They made specialty woven garments for ministry in the sanctuary and the holy garments for the errand for Aaron from the, the blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, just as the Lord had commanded Moses, making the ephod. Bezalel made the ephod of gold, of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and of finely spun linen. They hammered out the sheets of gold, and he cut threads from them to interweave with the blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and the fine linen, and a skull film, in a skillful design. They made shoulder pieces for attaching it. It was joined together at its twi two edges. The art, the artistically woven waistband that was on the ephod was of one piece with the ephod according to the same workmanship of gold, of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and of finely spun linen, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then they mounted the onyx stones surrounded with gold filigree settings engraved with the names of Israel's sons as a gem cutter. Engraves a seal, he, he fastened them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as memorial stones for the Israelites, just as the Lord had commanded Moses, making the breast piece. He also made the embroidered breast piece with the same workmanship as the ephod of the gold of the blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and of finely spun linen. They made the breast piece square and folded double nine inches long and nine inches wide. They mounted four rows of gemstones on it. The first row was a row of carnelian, topaz, and emerald. The second row, a turquoise, a sapphire, and a diamond. The third row of jacinth and a and a, and a gate and an amethyst and the fourth row of pearl and onyx and a jasper. They were surrounded with gold filigree in their settings. The twelve stones corresponded to the names of Israel's sons. Each stone was engraved like a seal with one of the names of the twelve tribes. They made braided chains of purple gold cord for the breast piece. They also fashioned two gold filigree settings and two gold rings and attached the two rings to its two corners. Then they attached the two gold cords to the two gold rings on the corners of the breast piece. They attached the other ends of the two cords to the two filigree setting and in this way attached them to the ephod's shoulder piece in front. They made two other gold rings and put them at the two other corners of the breast piece on the way. On the edge that is next to the inner border of the ephod, they made two more gold rings and attached them to the bottom of the ephod's two shoulder pieces on its front close to its seam above the ephod's wolf waistband. Then they tied the breast piece from the spring, its rings to the rings of the ephod with the cord of blue yarn, so that the breast piece was above the ephod's waistband and did not come loose from the ephod. They did just as the Lord had commanded Moses, making the robe. They made the woven robe of ephod entirely, entirely of blue yarn. There was an opening in the center of the robe like that of body armor with the collar around the opening so that it would not tear. They made pomegranates of finely spun blue, purple, and scarlet yarn on the lower end of the robe. They made bells of pure gold and attached the bells between the pom pomegranates all around the hem of the robe between the pomegranates. A bell and a pomegranate alternating all around the lower hem of the robe to be worn for ministry. They made it just as the Lord had commanded Moses, the other priestly garments. They made the tunics of fine woven linen for Aaron and his sons. They also made the turban and ornament headbands of fine linen, the undergarments and the sash of finely spun linen of embroidered blue, purple, and scarlet yarn. They did just as the Lord had commanded Moses, making the holy diadem. They also made a medallion. The holy diadem out of pure gold and wrote on it an inscription like the engraving on a seal, holy to the Lord. Then they attached a cord of blue yarn to it in order to mount it on the turban 
just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Moses' inspection of the tabernacle. So all the work of the tabernacle, the tent of the meeting, was finished. The Israelites did everything just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then they brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent, with all its furnishings, its clasps, its planks, its crossbars, and its posts and bases. The covering of ram skins dyed red, and the covering of matted skins the veil for the screen, the ark of the testimony with its poles and the mercy seat, the table, all its utensils, and the bread of the presence, the pure gold lampstand with its lamps are arranged in all its utensils, as well as the oil for the light, the gold altar, the anointing oil, the fragrant incense, the screen for the entrance to the tent, the bronze altar with its bronze grate, its poles and all its utensils, the base within its stand, the hangings of the courtyard, its posts and bases, the screen for the gate of the courtyard, its ropes and tin pegs, and all the equipment for the service of the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, and especially woven garments for ministering in the sanctuary, the holy garments for Aaron, the priests, and the garments for his sons to serve as priests. The Israelites had done all the work according to everything the Lord had commanded Moses. Moses inspected all the work they had accomplished. They had all they had done just as the Lord commanded. Then Moses blessed them. Setting up the tabernacle, the Lord spoke to Moses, You are to set up the tabernacle, the tent of the meeting, on the first day of the first month. Put the ark of the testimony there, and screen off the ark with the veil. Then bring in the table, and lay out its arrangements. Also bring in the lampstand, and set up its lamps. Place the gold altar for incense in front of the ark of the testimony. Put up the screen for the entrance to the tabernacle. Position the altar of burnt offering in front of entrance to the tabernacle. The tent of meeting place the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it. Assemble the surrounding courtyard and hang the screen for the gate of the courtyard. Take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything in it consecrated along with all its furnishings so that it will be holy. Anoint the altar for altar of burnt offerings and all its utensils. Consecrate the altar so that it will be specially holy. Anoint the basin and its stand and consecrate it. Then bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance to the tent of meeting and wash them with water. Clothe Aaron with the holy garments. Anoint him and consecrate him so that he can serve me as a priest. Have his sons come forward and clothe them in tunics. Anoint them just as you anoint their father so that they may also serve me as priests. Their anointing will serve to inaugurate a, a permanent priesthood for them throughout their generations. Moses did everything just as the Lord had commanded him. The tabernacle was set up in the first month of the second year on the first day of the month. Moses set up the tabernacle. He laid its base, its position, its place, inserted its crossbars, and set up its posts. Then he spread the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent on the top of it, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Moses took the testimony and placed it in the ark and attached the poles to the ark. He set the mercy he set the mercy seat on top of the ark. He brought the ark into the tabernacle, put up the veil for the screen, and screened off the ark of the testimony, just as the Lord had commanded him. Moses placed the taber, the table, in the tent of meeting on the north side of the tabernacle, outside the veil. He arranged the bread on it before the Lord, just as the Lord had commanded him. He also put the lampstand in the tent of meeting up opposite the table on the south side of the tabernacle, and set up the lamps before the Lord, just as the Lord had commanded him. Moses also installed the gold altar in the tent of meeting in front of the veil and burned fragrant incense on it just as the Lord had commanded him. He put up the screen at the entrance to the tabernacle. Then he placed the altar of burnt offerings at the entrance to the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, and offered the the burnt offering and the grain offering on it just as the Lord had commanded him. 
basin. He said the basin between the tent of meeting and altar and put water in it for washing. Moses, Aaron, and his sons washed their hands and feet from it. They washed whenever they came to the tent of meeting and approached the altar just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Next, Moses set up the surrounding courtyard for the tabernacle and the altar and hung a screen for the gate of the courtyard. So Moses finished the work, the Lord's glory. The cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses was unable to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud rested on it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. The Israelites set out whenever the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle throughout the, all the stages of their journey. If the cloud was not taken up, they did not set out until the day it was taken up, for the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day, and there was a fire inside the cloud by night, and vis visible to the entire house of Israel throughout all the stages of their journey. Share this video with someone else. Have a blessed day.